Have you ever felt so overwhelmed that you just shut down emotionally and physically? Perhaps you've experienced a sudden loss of energy, a chronic feeling of numbness or disconnection from the world around you. These are all common symptoms of what's known as a dorsal vagal shutdown. It's a physiological reaction to stress that can leave us feeling helpless and unable to cope. I'm kind of guessing that's what brings you here to this episode. You probably think something's wrong with you or that things won't improve. You might be feeling hopeless, you might be feeling helpless. But what exactly is a dorsal vagal shutdown and how can we recognize it and manage it? In this episode, I'm going to dive deeply into the topic of dorsal vagal shutdowns and provide you with some concrete next steps so you can live a life with a bit more connection and a bit more hope. My name is Justin Sinceri. I am a therapist, coach, and the creator of the Polyvagal Trauma Relief System. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken, where I teach you how to finally get relief from trauma using clear language and practical techniques. This podcast is not therapy, nor is it intended to be a replacement for therapy. This is a new blog over on justinlmft.com called Understanding Dorsal Vagal Shutdown from Collapse to Trauma. So dorsal vagal shutdown is a potential physiological response to stress that occurs when our autonomic nervous system is activated but overwhelmed. It's something that happens when our body cannot run away, it cannot fight back, and so it collapses. It's like a limp collapse. The shutdown is a limp collapse versus a freeze, which is more of a tense stiffening. They're both immobile, but a dorsal vagal shutdown is that limp collapse. And really this kicks in uh, due to a life threat, like our body detects that there is some sort of life threat, that its life is actually not just, not just its safety is in danger, but that its life is in threat, okay? So as a response to that, it goes into a dorsal vagal shutdown, that limb collapse. That's how it evolutionarily uh, evolved within us. It's, it's intended to uh, help us to survive some sort of a life threat scenario. When in the shutdown state, the body's functions slow down significantly, and this makes us appear dead, or if we go through this, that, that it, we look like a corpse. Heart rate goes down, breathing slow down a lot, digestion's inhibited, and the body might feel numb, might feel disconnected, dissociation might happen. So if a predator, you know, sees this, which looks like uh, death, it's more likely to, I guess, mosey on by, or if it's in its own flight, fight energy, more fight, predatory, uh, hunting kind of energy, then it's probably not going to stop. It needs to use up its own energy. So it'll go right by uh, the prey that is in a dorsal vagal shutdown and instead chase down the prey that is running away. But basically that that's the evolutionary intent of shutdown is to to mimic death, basically. A bunch of things can cause a dorsal vagal shutdown. Uh, it could be a physical, like traumatic incidents, something that you've gone through physically. It could be emotionally traumatic. It could be chronic stress. It could be a chronic illness. All these things can trigger or help to trigger a dorsal vagal shutdown, especially as they, you know, uh, add up on each other. Part of this is chronic stress. So that could be like financial problems, relationship issues, work-related stress. None of these things, those, at least those few examples, none of these might be enough to trigger someone into a dorsal vagal shutdown. But if you have those chronically ongoing, plus, you know, you're going through a chronic illness, plus you've gone through a specific, uh, more acute traumatic incident, plus you've had a childhood with poor attachment, you know, the more of these chronic things that add up, these can also uh, lead to a, a flavor of shutdown in your system. Chronically existing in shutdown won't be the same as the immediate life threat uh, instance of a shutdown. So what I described earlier was, you know, a prey surviving in the wild, basically. But as human beings, we have more of this chronic existence of being in shutdown, and that's going to look different. So shutdown can look obvious on the outside, especially more of that like life threat situation. You'll see someone, you know, collapse and go limp. Like if you watch uh, videos of people on, on roller coasters, like on YouTube, you could find videos of people passing out on roller coasters. So that, that's a dorsal vagal shutdown. They, they cannot run away, they can't fight, and their body collapses while they're on a roller coaster. But for someone who's in that 
ongoing stress, like that chronic stress, it might be more difficult to detect that they are in a prominent uh, or, dom or dominant dorsal vagal shutdown. What they might be going through could include numbness or even dissociation. They might be feeling disconnected from reality or from other people. They might have low energy, fatigue. My therapy clients often describe something really similar uh, regarding their experience of being in shutdown or, or of depression, basically. When I ask them to explain what it's like to be in shutdown or to be depressed, they will share with me that it feels like they're in a dark room and they're all alone. Usually they'll give an image of laying on the ground, not like tense fetal position, but more just like limp and collapsed. But they always say they're alone. They always say it's a dark room. Sometimes they say it's a room, but there's no walls. Sometimes it's a room with walls, um, but they always paint this picture of being alone in the dark, uh, limp and collapsed, uh, the emotions are often hopeless, helpless, sad, or numb. And there's, yeah, that's what it looks like. That's what consistently they describe being in a shutdown state. That's what they're expl uh, explaining. Now, can you see that on the, from the outside looking in? No, of course not. Someone who's in a shutdown, especially like in a school system, they don't cause problems. They just kind of like they're there but they're not loud and causing problems. Their motivation might be super low, but they're not the loud kid in class causing problems. You know, they're not the person at Starbucks throwing a fit because their, uh, their coffee was wrong. So the person in shutdown, pretty much they go along and they don't want to make, they don't want attention. They want to be hidden. They want to be, a, um, not that they want to, but biologically they have this sort of impulse to hide in, in a sense. So that permeates throughout their day-to-day -day life. So let's connect dorsal vagal shutdown with trauma. Trauma is basically not, not the thing that you go through, but the impact of the thing that you go through or the impact of the things you didn't go through. So the thing that you went through could be, uh, let's say some sort of attack or assaults or uh, accident. So there's something you went through that may have left you in a traumatized state but it's not the thing you went through, it's the impact of the thing you went through. Likewise, trauma could also be the things that you didn't go through and how those impacted you. So you're supposed to get healthy, safe attachment with caregivers growing up. If you didn't get that, that could leave you in a traumatized state. So trauma is the impact, not the event or the lack of events, although obviously some events or some lack of events are going to be more potentially traumatic than others, but the point is, it's the impact. And the impact is being stuck in a defensive state. Your polyvagal state will be uh, flight, fight, shut down, or maybe freeze. But basically, you're stuck in a defensive state. For our purposes, we're talking about shutdown, the dorsal vagal shutdown. No matter what the path of trauma is, whether it's, uh, you know, maybe you didn't get what you needed to growing up, or you went through a thing that left you in a traumatized state, what these have in common is difficulty or inability to access the safety state. So trauma is being stuck in a defensive state and having a really difficult time accessing or maintaining access to the safety state. So how does this relate to uh, shutdown? When we look at the path of trauma that has to do with not getting your needs met growing up, like you know, typically childhood kind of stuff, that path of trauma really relates to the uh, the impulse to attachment to, to attach to others like it's not being fulfilled. Children are born they to attach to their parents. They have to. It's their they're biologically predisposed to. They must attach to safe others. But when that impulse can't be fulfilled, then the safety state can't get developed. And so oftentimes that can leave them in more of a shutdown state, especially if they don't have any sort of attachment. That's probably going to leave them in more of a shutdown state. In the other path of trauma, which is going through a thing that leaves you in a traumatized state that could result in a freeze. And freeze is a combination of shutdown, so uh, immobility, plus flight, fight, sympathetic. Freeze is being mo like you're prepared for mobility. You're, the body's ready to run away or fight, but it cannot either through force or through perception. But either way, that flight fight energy is locked or frozen into the system. What's locking it into the system is the immobility of shutdown. 
So the freeze path of trauma directly involves shutdown through immobility, the dorsal vagal shutdown. But it's not alone, it's with flight fight, and that, that freezes in the sympathetic flight fight energy. That frozen flight fight energy is going to explode in a rage, potentially, or erupt into a panic attack, or be felt as overwhelm, or pop up during flashbacks or nightmares. It'll be triggered by contexts that are similar to whatever that person went through. The flight fight energy remains frozen in the system through the immobility of shutdown. So freeze and shutdown are different, but they do both involve immobilization. So it's totally, I think it's very much possible to come out of a chronic dorsal vagal shutdown. On an evolutionary level, I mean, yeah, we're, we're built to do so. We have the wiring, I suppose, to be able to do so. Our, our autonomic nervous system evolved to come out of shutdown. We come out of shutdown out of immobility, out of collapse, up into flight fight. So our um, sympathetic system kicks on, energy comes back into our system. So out of collapse into sympathetic, and then if we can successfully run away or use aggression, then we can get to safety and access our safety state again. So on an evolutionary level, yeah, it's totally possible to come out of shutdown. I think wild animals do just fine with that. Human beings, we're, we're something different. And there's a whole bunch of reasons that human beings stay stuck, like, you know, things that we do to ourselves and things that we do to each other, but that's a whole other conversation. So it's not really quick for us. We can come out of shutdown, but it's not a quick process. Instead, we need to slowly emerge from shutdown. And as we slowly emerge from shutdown, more and more of that flight fight energy will come back into our system. And that's what we want. That's a good thing as long as we can welcome it and tolerate it a bit at a time. And this can be really overwhelming for people, and that really kind of stops the process of self-regulation and trauma recovery, which is sad, obviously. But that, that energy coming back into the system can be overwhelming. It can be scary, especially if you're not prepared for it and you don't know what to expect. And so what we do is we, we turn to behavioral adaptations like overeating, uh, binge-watching something on TV, uh, mindlessly swiping through our phone, or drug use, we, or a whole bunch of other things. We do these things as a way to cope with or ignore or minimize or not deal with what we have inside that natural self-regulation process. So eventually we have to move beyond these behavioral adaptation and even beyond the ways that we typically cope or manage. And instead, eventually we kind of have to embrace mindfully the experience of being in a shutdown state and also the experience of flight fight energy coming back into our system and the natural polyvagal ladder climbing and self-regulation process. So no, I don't, I don't think a dorsal vagal shutdown needs to be permanent. I think it's generally possible to live a more connected and more fulfilling life. It is a long process. One thing that can help if you can access it is co-regulation. I talked with Deb Dana a long time ago and she had this really great analogy. And what she said was, to get a turtle to come out of the shell, you don't knock on its shell and you don't shake them. You just kind of sit there patiently. But you really have to be beaming that ventral vagal energy to that system. What she's saying here is that coming out of shutdown can't be forced. You can't, you know, yell at somebody enough and they'll come out of shutdown. You can't shake them to get them out of shutdown. First, they have to detect that it's safe, that it's okay to come out of shutdown. They have to know it's safe. And I don't mean knowing like in a cognitive level, although maybe that's part of it, but I mean knowing more like a biological level that we're receiving cues of safety from the external environment, whether that's the literal physical environment or the people in the environment. I mean, the, the relationships in the environment. So knowing means that we're neurocepting cues of safety from the environment. And when we get cues of safety from a safe other person, that's called co-regulation. So when Deb Dana says that we need to beam safety cues, that's what she's referring to. So if somebody in shutdown can connect with safe others that provide them a sense of safety, that, that could be helpful. Oh, but yeah, I know this can be difficult, especially maybe for someone in shutdown because they tend to want to be alone or tend to be alone and to not be around others. Connection is quite a challenge for them. So that might not be the starting point. It can absolutely be helpful, but 
that might not be where you start. So the, the starting point might be with your external environment. And that's kind of where I recommend people start in my Building Safety Anchors course. That is like the second lesson or the first um, action point really is to begin to manipulate your environment. Basically, it is possible to increase the amount of safety cues coming from your external environment. Everything around you right now, you're detecting or neurocepting as safe or dangerous. Like it's affecting your polyvagal state or neutral maybe, but just that's the idea. Everything around you is affecting your polyvagal state. There are pieces of your environment like the lighting, the sound, smells, the proximity of your environment. All these things are affecting you and affecting your potential to, to, to neurocept safety and your potential to come out of shutdown or whatever defensive state and to climb your polyvagal ladder. Take this idea then and apply it to your home environment maybe. Like do a quick you know, assessment of your home and identify where in your home you feel the safest or what kind of cues you have in your home where you feel more safety in your system, like more calm, you can breathe easier. And notice what takes you away from safety. It's possible to manipulate your environment to give yourself more safety cues. And then if you can do that, what I would invite you to do is to mindfully experience those safety cues. What you've set up are passive safety cues and that's, those are things you don't exactly have to consciously, mindfully notice. They simply provide you a steady stream of safety. And that could be like, you know, music you're listening to or being in silence. It could be the lighting, you know, whatever. So set yourself up with passive safety cues. And then the next step would be to mindfully experience them. So to take it, to be a little bit more active about those safety cues. So if you set yourself up with like dim lighting in your room and you feel more safety in that, don't just set it up and then swipe it on your, on your phone, right? Don't just set it up and then like go on TikTok. Well, I, I recommend don't go on TikTok at all, but you, you get the idea. Instead, what I want you to do is to set up that, you know, in that lighting or that scent or that music, whatever it is, set it up and then sit in or be immobile, lay down, it doesn't matter, but be immobile, be in your shutdown immobility with curiosity and experience the safety from the environment. If you can first off set up the environment to be to provide you with more safety, then you might be able to experience that safety more mindfully. If you can do that, then you might be able to actually allow some of your dorsal vagal shutdown activation. And I know it sounds scary, but basically in shutdown, your body has an impulse to immobilize. So allow yourself to immobilize without judgment. Allow yourself to be immobile while being curious about what it's like to be immobile in your safety environment. When we're in shutdown, usually environment is overstimulating or overwhelming. So this is your opportunity to take control and manipulate your environment to provide yourself with less stimulation if that feels right for you. But you'll have to ask yourself how you feel and if you tweak things, how does that, how does that feel? So if you can do this, if you can allow mindful experiencing of your shutdown state in the safety environment, then your natural capacity for self-regulation might start to emerge. Okay. So as you come out of shutdown, your flight fight energy might start to fill up your system. And ideally we want that to be little by little by little, but yeah, if you're experiencing significant or debilitating symptoms of dorsal vagal shutdown, yeah, seek professional help. Um, working with someone who's polyvagal informed, especially in my opinion, can be extremely helpful. To wrap it up, I do believe there is a lot of hope in coming out of shutdown. That's been my um, dominant or my home away from home has been shutdown. I've spent a lot of time in shutdown in my life. So I know that coming out of it is possible but yeah, it's kind of, it's a low, slow process. You do it little by little. You invite your sympathetic flight fight energy little by little, feel it little by little without judgment, with curiosity and from your safety state. I know this might sound overwhelming and you're like, you get the idea, but maybe you're like, cool, Justin, but how? <laughs> and I gave you some first steps, but there's a, there's a lot more to this. And that's why I created something for you. It's called Stuck Not Broken Total Access Membership. And that gives you access to all of my trauma recovery courses, 
and my private community for one subscription. So you can take Polyvagal 101, Building Safety Anchors, and Unstucking Defensive States. You can take all my courses at your own pace and connect with my community. You can meet with me twice a month during our Q&A meetups. You can chit chat with me in the forum, ask questions whenever you need to. There's daily growth hub challenges. I post a quick video once a week with more insight. There's a lot going on in the community and I really hope you'll give it a shot. All the courses and the private supportive community, they're, they're amazing people in there. If you're interested in that, go to justinlmft.com slash total access, justinlmft.com slash total access. I'll have a link for you in the description. But I also do have a nifty gifty for you. It's a freebie. And this one is my three day polyvagal stage challenge. If you sign up for my email list, you'll get three emails over the next three days. And in each email, I'll give you a brief lesson and then instructions on how to notice your polyvagal states in very easy, practical ways to get, so you can really have more familiarity with what it's like to be you or what these polyvagal states feel like within you. I'll have a link for that in the description as well. If you can't tap it, I'll tell you it. It is uh, justinlmft.com slash three day polyvagal. That's the numeral three, justinlmft.com slash three day polyvagal. Thank you so much for listening, fellow Stuckna. I do hope that this episode has been a super helpful resource for you in learning about the polyvagal theory, applying it to your trauma relief, and hopefully making some steps toward coming out of your stuck shutdown state. Bye. This podcast is not therapy, not intended to be therapy or be a replacement for therapy. Nothing in this creates or indicates a therapeutic relationship. Please consult with your therapist or seek for one in your area if you are experiencing mental health symptoms. Nothing in this podcast should be construed to be specific life advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. More resources are available in the description of this episode and in the footer of justinlmft.com.